In this video, I'll introduce five more features of Verilog, including bus notation, selecting wires from buses, the assign command, constants, and the equality operator. As we design larger Verilog modules, they often involve lots of wires, but frequently groups of these wires are related. For example, in the 4-bit adder module shown, we have two 4-bit inputs, A and B, and one 4-bit output, C. It can be tedious to draw these individual wires, and it is also tedious in Verilog to declare each bit of these wires and ports individually. To simplify our drawings in Verilog, we're going to group related wires into what is called a bus. In drawings, we'll indicate buses by using slightly thicker lines and drawing a slash through them and writing a number which indicates how many wires make up the bus. Typically, bus labels include a numerical range indicating which bits of the signal are included. For example, we wrote bracket 3 colon 0 bracket indicating that our buses include bits 0, 1, 2, and 3. In Verilog, we can declare buses using the same bracket notation, again listing from the more significant bit number first. This notation is often read as from 3 down to 0. So after we've declared our buses, we're likely going to want to connect individual wires of these buses in our circuits. To indicate this in a circuit diagram, we draw a thin diagonal line coming from the bus and label the resulting wire. In this case, I'm showing the least significant bit of the output is the XOR of the least significant bits of the inputs. In Verilog, we use bracket notation to show selection of a subset of a bus. If we want to connect wires directly from one bus to another, we can use Verilog's assign command. This works for individual wires as well as buses and subsets of buses. Verilog allows us to define multi-bit constants. These constants are written in the following format. The first part is the size, and this is a number which indicates the number of bits that the constant is. Next is a tick mark, followed by a letter which indicates what encoding should be used. This could be B for binary, D for decimal, or H for hexadecimal. And then finally is the value. For example, we could write the 8-bit hexadecimal constant D7, the 5-bit binary constant 11001, or the 10-bit number that has the decimal value 978. So like many languages, Verilog gives us the ability to name constants using define statements. The syntax that Verilog uses is a tick mark followed by the word define, and then the name of the constant, and then the value of the constant followed by a semicolon. The last Verilog feature that we'll introduce is the equality operator. The equality operator allows us to compare two multi-bit signals to see if they're equal. So for example, I could compare the 2-bit signal A from 1 down to 0 to the 2-bit constant 1 and 0. And the result of this computation is a single-bit signal. So no matter how many bits we're comparing, the result is always a boolean, true or false, represented as a 1 for true and a 0 for false. It's important to recognize that even though this looks like more traditional software programming language code, this still represents a hardware circuit. If we do the equality of one bit, we get the resulting truth table, that if we're comparing a single bit A to a single bit B, if the two bits are the same, the output should be 1. If the bits differ, the output should be 0. And if both bits are 1, then the output should be 1. And this is the XNOR operation. 
It's the opposite of the XOR operation. So when we implement a multi-bit comparison like the one we've shown, we're actually implementing multiple XNORs, one for each bit of the computation, and we're going to and those together because the comparison is only true if each bit of the comparison is true. So this circuit is encoded by this equality operator.